Hello and welcome to Bendigo Life and I'm joined this morning by Nicole. Now Nicole, all I know is that you're involved in some way with setting up a, uh, an entertainment venue for underage people here in Bendigo. That's correct. But I'm going to leave it to you to tell me a bit about who you are and what your organisation sure. is because it's a very interesting name for oh, your organisation. Oh it is. Greasy Monkey um, started at the end of last year, started down in Melbourne but basically it's a nightclub for teenagers between 14 and 17. We had a look around and we've actually got a teenager ourselves. There's actually nowhere for them to go. You're dead right. There isn't. That. And they, they want somewhere to go. But people look at this group of people and say, oh, no, they're too hard or they'll cause trouble. And actually, they don't. They actually want somewhere to go. Um, and they, they're no trouble. They're actually really good kids. And it's amazing what you know, the perception is in the community mm. of these kids, but they don't understand that they're going to the end of their school life, so they have to mature, they have to make responsible um, decisions for their careers, yep. they're starting to get their learners, so they know what it is to drink and drive and things like that. So they're not as bad as everybody makes them out to be. Well, it's all very well to, to think all that, and yeah. I'm like you, I, would, I have had kids yeah. that age, they're in their 20s and early yeah. 20s now, yeah. as they do. Uh, but yeah, it's all very well to think all that, but now you have some uh, experience, I guess, having hmm. put your toe in the water and said, well, let's see if yes. our, our vision is right, hmm. if people are going to respond. Yeah. How has the Melbourne experiment worked? No, it's worked really well. Um, the kids, um, especially, they're sort of, they, they're a diverse group of um, teenagers, mm. so they can come from, you know, private schools or sporting functions and things like that. They like to um, come and just socialise and, you know, instead of being on the phone like this every mm. five seconds because every teenager, time, oh, yeah. don't we see that. Um, they actually do like to and dance and have fun and, I mean, as you know, um, just recently on television, they've just put on these ads for especially aimed at female teenagers because they're worried they're not getting up mm. and going out and exercising and doing anything more because they're so worried about their image and, mm. and so it's so important for them to get up and socialise and get away from these And, and what sort of numbers have you found uh, that have been there to support what the venture you've started in Melbourne? Yeah, it's that'd be, I'm only asking about yeah. Melbourne because... It, it That's where we've started, be, yeah. yeah. A good indicator for yeah. what we might expect in Bendigo. Um, Basically, you can start from anywhere from 100 up. So what, yeah. because of social media, and they are on their phones all the time, yeah. once one group decides they're going, or one, say one school's going, yeah. and then the affiliated school will go, oh, we're coming too, and then that school comes as well. Um, so they all do communicate. Well, it sounds like with the numbers and with your social media um, strategy in terms mm. of awareness, that's mm. probably working fairly well. That's all right. The other part of the equation surely would be schools and mm -hmm. parents. Yes. Because they would be like me, they'd think, oh, hang on, who yeah. are these people and what can exactly. we expect our kids mm. to be uh, behaving? Mm. How will they behave? So how have you been able to overcome any concerns from parents of schools or even the police for that matter? Yeah, it's a great question. What we've always said is to the parents, they're more than welcome to actually come in and have a look around, mm. have a look how many security staff we've got. Have they been doing that? Yes, they do. And mm. they come and talk to us. Um, they're quite happy to, you know, because they do, they come and they go, where's my child going? Mm. What are they doing here? And then that's a good thing, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And it's sort of, it's not like the good old days when it was a blue light disco. Mm. And, you know, it was, did you? Disco. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so it's run by the police. It's automatically mm. got this stigma of everything safe. Yeah. Because it's run by a company, of course, they're going to think, well, who's running this? Mm. Who are they? And things. But when they realise that it's parents themselves, and then we've, of course, got fully qualified and accredited security staff to manage teenagers. Yeah. Um, it's funny, Nicole, uh, yeah. you mentioned blue light discos and how yeah. everyone laughs about them. Yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, they left a hell of a gap, a big void in society yeah, and in our communities when mm. they ceased. Um, are you pretty confident that with Bendigo, let's come to Bendigo Yeah, we'll now. come to Bendigo now, yep. What have you got planned for Bendigo and how's it all going to roll out here? Yeah, so um, with Bendigo, we've got our first function here on the 2nd of April, which is Saturday night, um, at the Trades Hall in View Street. Um, it's going to, as I said, as we run it in Melbourne, you know, there's the security, there's local DJs, so it's important that we get kids with local talent because mm. um, we want to get the kids to show us what they can do because a lot of these 
you know, teenagers are very talented because they've been working at music for a long time. Mm. Even my own daughter, she's a really good singer Mm. and she works so hard at it, you know what I mean? And so these kids are really quite talented for their age. And so we encourage them to come in and show us what we've got. So with Bendigo, we want them to come in on Saturday night, see what it's like, have a good time, have a dance, socialise with people. And then if they think, you know, oh, this is great, we'd actually like to get some live bands in as well as DJs. So kids can actually show us what they've got yeah. and how talented they actually are. And I guess what they want too, and you're filling the, the mm. need then, you, rather yep. than sort of assuming that they want this or they want that. That's right. Then uh, relying on them to, to tell you what it is they want. Mm. Um, in terms of letting people know how it's happening yes. uh, in Bendigo, mm-hmm. have you had much support from, say, for example, the police, the council, or the schools to be able to get word out there? We've been, um, it's sort of, you've got to be careful with that because with the schools, they don't want to be seen to promoting a teenage nightclub. Mm. However, we have handed out you know a lot of brochures to the kids and and things like um, that Um, and on our website it states you know the parents are more than welcome to come in Um, Mm. they're more than welcome to contact um, Greasy Monkey at any time to discuss any issues that they may have Um, and then of course and sorry while you're on that what's the best way for parents or anybody to learn more about it do you have a website they can go to our website which is greasymonkey.com.au and um, but also our Facebook page as well. You know what's amazing, Nicole? We're yeah. sitting here talking about this. We've got a couple of responsible parents with kids yeah, yeah. saying, well, let's do it right. Let's mm. have security. Let's mm. have a, a venue that's, you know, hopefully, well, I'll mention drugs and alcohol in a minute or ask the question. Yeah. But here you are trying to get the word out there. Mm. Um, at the same time, you can have one kid can put something on Facebook and, mm. well, his parents are away on holidays and any that's number right. of examples. Yeah. And two or three hundred kids turn up, yeah. the, you know, at his house. Yeah, so that's exactly, and, and that's what we don't want. We don't, we don't yeah. want that to happen to parents that all yeah. these, you know, we'd rather them come to the venue and have a good time. Mm. And so that sort of thing doesn't and happen. Time. And it is yeah. safe because the, there is a no tolerance to drugs, well, alcohol, that's what I'm about to ask you. or how anything. Do you do that? That's through, how do you get that message across to kids for a start? And oh, well, yeah, a exactly. Um, basically, Oh, it's obviously on the website and all that sort of thing. But if the kids come to to the door, and obviously security's at the door, and they show any sign of, you know, being mm. affected by alcohol or drugs, they just won't be allowed in. It's that simple. We can't afford to ruin our reputation mm. for some irresponsible behaviour. Yep. And at the end of the day, we don't want the parents to be worrying about what the kids are doing. Um, and if they bring, for example, if they bring bags in, I think they're going to be really tricky and get mm. away with it. All the bags are isolated away from them, yep. and they're actually not allowed to touch them until they go. Um, and then they're constantly watched, mm. not yeah. as in, you know, know you I'm mean, not yeah. eagle eyeing them mm. or things like that, yeah. but just watched as in to make sure that they're not doing the wrong thing. Cause what they do is they ruin it for everybody else. Mm. And we don't want that. Cause well, you want kids to be safe as well. Exactly. And you just want them to have a positive experience mm. and a good time. And you mm. don't want them to go, Oh, that happened or this happened. Cause then yeah. they will tell their parents and we don't want that at all. Yeah. So, um, the mechanics of the thing then, how much to get in, mm-hmm. when, where, you've already said Trades Hall, but yep. let's reinforce that for Bendigo. Bendigo Trades Hall in View Street, number 40, I think it is. Um, it's $15 to get in, but you can pre- pre-book on Facebook and it goes through to Try Booking, which is like just like using Ticket Tech or something like that. Yep. And you see pre-book and we're going to get some door prices for the people that um, pre-book as well. Mm-hmm. So... Um, and that's from the local community as well. So it's great that, you know, shops around here have got behind it and thought it's a great idea. Oh, it's a, no doubt there's a gap in kids' exactly. lives at that age because they're too young to go to a pub yeah. and with alcohol and all that that's sort of it. It's a great, uh, great idea. Mm. Um, just to gain those ages, though, and mm. how it works as far as people mm-hmm. or parents dropping them off and mm-hmm. what time they pick up. So what hours? Yeah, it runs from 8 till midnight. So, um, yeah, if they get dropped off and picked up at midnight, and we usually have security standing at the front to make sure that they get picked up, you know. It's almost like being at school and the parents come in a line and pick them up, you know mm. what I mean? So, yeah. yeah, we do want them to be safe at all times. So. And any DJs this time? Were you having DJs this time? Or yes, we're having or? DJ this time. But as I said, if, you know, kids or teenagers have got their own band and they'd like to promote themselves in front of their peers, they're more than welcome to contact us via the website. Um, or Facebook, um, yeah, because we'd like to get the local teenagers involved in it because it's their thing. We just run it. <laughs> I've got to ask you this question. I know yeah. you have um, you have um, your own security in that. Mm. In terms of the local police, are they they're obviously aware of it and making sure. I know if you have a party at your house, yes. it's happening with us on the twenty first. Mm-hmm. It's responsible to let them know so yes. they know what to expect. Yes, how we do across have this to... are they? Um, 
I'm not sure how across they are, but they will be contacted and they will have all the information about the party, where it's held, the hours where it's being held, what security will be there. So that will be done prior to the party being held. And then we're going to run them um, the first Saturday of every month after that as well. So it gets some continuity behind it. So the community knows that this is when it's on and that's when they can come and you know, have a dance, All right, basically. well, good on you for seeing no, the need thank you. and doing something about it. Yeah. Uh, the proof will be in the pudding. It and will be. No doubt the kids will be the mm. firm judges during yeah. the execution with kids. Yes, absolutely. They'll certainly make up their mind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But if it's, a, if it's a, a real hit, then obviously they they carry that sort of thing too. I mean, you, mm. you've almost got then a wave of social media contact. So mm. good luck with the, the Thanks, uh, first one here in Bendigo, Nicole. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I would hopefully remind people again that the best way to find out more about this and uh, all the details you need to know about getting your kids there safely and getting them home safely, go to that uh, website we're showing up there now on the screen, at Greasy Monkey, and uh, all the details are there. So good luck again, Nicole. Thanks. I really and, appreciate uh, it. Yeah, we'll look forward to seeing how, what the outcome is down yeah, the track. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis.